your Coca-Cola bottler presents Claudia, based on the famous play and novels by Rose Franken. Brought to you transcribed Monday through Friday by your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. Relax, and while you're listening, refresh yourself. Have a Coke. And now, Claudia. Oh, just smell the air, David. The evening air in Eastbrook is so wonderfully fragrant. Just another five minutes' drive and we'll be home. It seems even sweeter on the farm. I hope so. Did you tell Claudia I was coming? I didn't have a chance to call her. We left the office in such a hurry. But it'll be a pleasant surprise for her. Doesn't she mind this kind of pleasant surprise? Good heavens, no. She thrives on them. You have quite an extraordinary wife. I know I have. That reminds me. What about your lunch? Hmm? What about it? Well, do we or do we not tell Claudia? Do we or do we not tell her what, David? Don't pretend to be dull. Tell her about with whom you had your lunch. Oh, oh you mean about my lunching with Victoria Manners. At oh. last. After all, it's not every day that you lunch with Broadway's handsomest star. Or is it? It isn't, thank heavens. Thank heavens. I thought she was a glorious-looking creature. I ate so much, I was so sleepy all afternoon, I could hardly keep my head up. But uh, you must have had beautiful dreams of the beautiful Victoria Manners. I don't know whether to take you seriously or not. Take me seriously and answer me. Are you going to tell Claudia about your having lunch with Victoria Manners? Of course I am. Why not? Well, uh, I mean, it uh, isn't the sort of thing one usually tells a wife, is it? Frankly, I don't know. I haven't had lunch with a blonde, unattached, single female since the day I was married. I suppose it isn't the thing one tells a wife. Now you're making sense. At least it isn't what one tells an average, everyday, typical wife. But Claudia isn't that kind of wife. They never are. Until they are. <laughs> you are very profound today, Roger. But, David, why tell Claudia something that may hurt her unnecessarily? Because I think enough of Claudia that I know it isn't going to hurt her. After all, I was going out to lunch in the first place because I promised Claudia I was going to eat a decent meal. Then, when Miss Manners just happened by and invited me to join her... Happened by? She took an elevator up 22 floors, knocked on our office door, and invited you to take her to dinner. And that isn't just a casual chance occurrence. As far as I'm concerned, it was. Personally, I... I think she's a rather dull young person. Miss Manners has lived a great deal too much without having understood enough of it. So I shall tell Claudia. I'll make a bet with you, Roger. Hmm, anything you say. I'll bet you that Claudia doesn't raise an eyebrow. I'll bet you that Claudia is absolutely delighted and pleased and will suggest that I do it more often. Ten dollars on that. Ten dollars it is. Well, this is going to be an easy way of getting my money back for what I considered was a very expensive lunch. Ho, ho, ho. Here we are. Home sweet home. All right, all out. Look, David, l let's forget that silly bet. Don't tell Claudia about Victoria Manners. What's the, what's the use? You're really serious. You really think she'll be upset. Oh, not necessarily, but... It was so innocent. There's no need to tell her. Well, that's exactly why. Oh, now I wish I'd gone straight on to Boston. Uh, now you're starting to get me worried. David, welcome home. I've been waiting for you all day. Hello, darling. And Roger, what a wonderful surprise. I do hope you don't mind, but David insisted. Mind, it's wonderful. The sheets came back from the laundry and everything. I am not spending the night. I am merely borrowing a little dinner, and then I'll be on my way. We will discuss <laughs> that later. Oh, it's so nice to have you home. Come on, come on, both of you, into the house. But tell me, what did you do all day? Oh, I, I played a little golf, a couple of sets of tennis, went swimming a while, and then I flew my airplane down to Texas. My, what did you do, Roger? you worked hard. He did. He worked all day. He hardly stopped. Oh, come on, let's sit in the living room and talk. You can wash up afterwards. Roger. Hmm? Did you say that David hardly stopped working all day? Hardly. And he accomplished worlds of work. David, answer me. Did you stop for lunch? Barely. Roger. But Roger, when I called, you told me David had gone out to lunch. That he was going to eat enormously. 
Oh, so I did. And I did eat enormously. He hardly took any time over it. Uh, did you, David? Only two hours. Two hours? Two hours. I told you he eat a 12-course dinner, not a 24-course one. Well, David eats very slowly. Say, what is going on here? First he hardly stops to take a deep breath, then he eats so slowly it takes two hours. Now, wait a minute. Now, listen, Roger. Get this straight. A bet is a bet. David. David, let's uh, call it off. I warned you. What's the big secret? Did you have a stomachache, David? Not quite. Darling, tell me the truth. Tell me you had a decent meal. You hardly had any breakfast. Tell me that you were... I ate at La Place. Ooh. A French restaurant. I ate everything on the menu. I'll never do it again. I was sleepy all afternoon. Oh, wheel. Is that what the mystery's about? That's all. That's and Claudia, all. this partner of mine is living in the past. Oh? He is so consumed with intrigue and romance <laughs> that he's a- afraid I'll tell you, darling, that I had a beautiful blonde for lunch. <laughs> no wonder it took you two hours. <laughs> Was she tough or tender? (laughs) You see, Roger? Did you have her broiled, baked, or fried? You see, David? She still doesn't believe you. I don't believe what? Darling, I am not Jack the Giant Killer. You're not? I thought you were. I did not eat the blonde. I had lunch with her. Blonde? I didn't know you knew a blonde. What blonde? Tell me all about her. You met her the other night, dear. Victoria Manners. You had lunch with Victoria Manners? Ho, ho, ho. Hush up. Well, how, how, how come you had lunch with her? Well, I was just leaving the office because I'd promised you that I would eat a good lunch. Don't blame her on me. Ho, ho, ho. There I was with my hat and coat on. Too warm for a coat today. Figuratively speaking, I was was just about to leave the office when Miss Manners came in and simply point blank invited me to have lunch with her. Well, that was very forward of her, wasn't it? Did you have to accept? Well... I, I didn't want to be rude. I, oh, I see. After all, she's a, a friend of mm. a friend of yours. I Practically wouldn't. a relative. And she was... She was very nice and... Just uh, how nice was she, David? Well, she was very friendly. She she just... Very was... friendly, eh? I'll bet she was friendly. David, don't say I didn't warn you. Darling, you're, you're not jealous, are you? Well, not exactly jealous, but... The last time I asked you to have lunch with me, you said you were busy, working. I was, but but today you made me promise I'd... Well, I don't have to say it again, do I? Must I must say, David, this is pretty sudden. I suggest you eat, and... Was she very friendly? Very. Oh, I Maybe see. someday you'll listen to me, David. I told you I've had more experience with this sort of thing. What sort of thing do you mean by this sort of thing, Roger? Uh, well, I mean... Well, it, it's just that, after, after all, a husband and Yes? A... Oh, I ought to have had enough sense to keep quiet. David, stop blushing and tell me. What'd she have to say? Well, she... hoped you were feeling well. It's about... Oh, me? I'm fine. What else did she say? Look, David, why don't you just give me my ten dollars and let me un- be on my way to Boston? I refuse to feel guilty. Roger, but... why go so fast, for heaven's sake? Well, I'd... I'd... I'd rather not be in the way while you two were... While we two what? Thrash this thing out, shall we say? What's there to thrash about? What's that ten dollars Roger says you owe him? Oh, we just made a bet. Uh, Skip it, please. Uh, Claudia, is there anything more you want to know about the lunch I had with Victoria Manners? Of course there is. Lots more. Oh, this sort of talk is fatal. (laughs) Well, let's let's get it over with. Go on, Claudia. Did you really enjoy it? Is it a good restaurant? Should we go there sometime? What did you say? I simply asked if we should go... Ho, ho, ho. Now, what kind of an answer is that? Ho, ho, ho. I think you (laughs) owe me ten dollars, Roger. You are not making any sense at all. Giving each other ten dollar bills as if they were dimes. You haven't told me yet if you had a decent lunch. I had a very decent lunch. But it's not going to cost me a cent. What do you mean? Darling, tell me straight the truth. Straight the truth. I am guilty. So do you mind that I had lunch with Victoria Manners? Now, let me see. Do you mean, um, do I want to scratch your eyes out? Well, you don't have to be so violent about it. You mean it. that I'm so jealous that I can't see straight? Well, I wouldn't exaggerate You mean that I'm as... furious with you for having had lunch with another now, woman? Darling, I didn't know you'd be so upset. I'd have never... You'd prefer d- it if I just didn't care at all who you gallivanted around Well, with? I just didn't think you'd take it so seriously. So That's... you want to know whether I'm angry at you for having lunch with Victoria Manners? Is that it? I still wish you hadn't said anything, David. 
Were you afraid to tell me? Not until Roger started to make me feel guilty. What do you think I think? I'm so mixed up, I I don't know what to think. Uh One minute you're talking about she was very friendly. The next minute you want to know, was it a good lunch? And now you're threatening to scratch her eyes out. (laughs) You've got me so mixed up, I... Don't be mixed up. I was spoofing. And I, I don't want to scratch her eyes out, darling. I think it's an awful shame. What is an awful shame? Poor Victoria Manners. Poor Victoria Manners? She's obviously falling very much in love with you. I can't blame her at all. I did, too. I don't believe my ears. It must be awful to find yourself falling in love with a man, not being able to help it, and having the sort of feeling that it's hopeless. What on earth makes you say she's falling in love with you? Well, any girl, even Victoria Manners, who'd ask a married man to lunch, must be love. I'm glad I'm not her. I would like to sit down. This is momentous. Why, Roger? Because I can't be jealous of somebody I feel so sorry for. David, maybe I'm a fool to trust you. (laughs) Especially with somebody like Miss Manners. who's out to get you. But I love you. And that makes me an idiot, doesn't it? (laughs) Mm. Anything but. (laughs) You win. Both of you. You're not like anything I've ever seen before. Here you are, David. Ten dollars. Thank you, Roger. You're welcome. Because Claudia is the most extraordinary woman I have ever laid eyes on. Thank you, Roger. Darling, you mean you've won ten dollars because of me? I have indeed. A nice, crisp ten dollar bill. <gasps> Give me. Because you are a wonderful idiot and I love you. That's wonderful. It means you can have lunch with Victoria Manners again. For nothing. And then I'll know you'll eat a really decent meal. It's wonderful. I'll go on up and wash you, too. Will I set an extra place for dinner? Mm-hmm. Dum, 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 dum. La, 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 la. It's nice, isn't it, that you can get Coca-Cola around the corner from anywhere today. You can stop when you're marketing and have an ice-cold Coke right in the grocery. You can pause during shopping for a Coke in your department store or variety store. When you're driving, you'll find Coke at the gas station, too. This friendly service enables you to shop refreshed, drive refreshed, work refreshed, whoever you are and whatever you do. Well, Mr. King, it looks like I lost ten dollars. Well, it does look like you did. Claudia is absolutely unpredictable. She reacts absolutely differently than any other wife or woman I've ever known. Hmm, That's what makes her Claudia. To be delighted that her husband took another woman to lunch, then to be sorry for the other woman. Amazing. (laughs) Oh, well, you'll get used to it, Mr. Killian. You know, a surprise every day. Mm -hmm. What's the surprise tomorrow? Well, I understand that David's going to stay home from the office for a few days. Yes, he has a great deal of work to do drawing up the plans for the freight terminal we're designing. So I suggested he stay on the farm to do the work, uninterrupted by phones and other office distractions. Are you suggesting that there will be no interruptions or distractions at home with Claudia and Mama? Claudia promised me she'd keep his nose to the drawing board. Well, we'll see how it works out tomorrow. As I was about to say... Every day, Monday through Friday, Claudia comes to you transcribed with the best wishes of your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. So listen again tomorrow at the same time. And now this is Joe King saying au revoir. And remember, whoever you are, whatever you do, wherever you may be, when you think of refreshment, think of Coca-Cola. For Coca-Cola makes any pause the pause that refreshes. And ice-cold Coca-Cola is everywhere. This broadcast of Claudia was supervised and directed by William Brown Maloney. And now, here's a word from your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola.